Hi, everybody. Lynn Barrett here coming to you um, to talk with you about seven steps for releasing the year. Um, instead of doing these weekly on Sunday nights, I have decided to just share with you uh, through a video about the seven steps and um, walking you through how to use the seven step process to release the year. A lot of you know that I use Jane Elizabeth Hart's um, Seven Steps for Successful Life Transitions. Um, I use it personally. I use it in my practice as a therapist, and um, and I use it in all for all sorts of reasons in all sorts of ways. Um, and for the last twenty five plus years, I've used the Seven Step process to release my year. So we go through the year and we have all these experiences, right? We meet new people, we, we release people from our lives. We have all sorts of different experiences. Some are really positive, some are really negative and difficult. And um, then there are neutral experiences in between there, all sorts of ups and downs. And so we use the seven step process to release all of the year so that we can walk into the new year clear and free and open to the new experiences that the new year is going to bring to us. And, you know, this video happens to be for releasing the year 2020 and preparing ourselves for the year 2021. But this can also be used any year that you ever walk through. So don't feel like you just have to watch this this year. You can put it on your schedule for next December as well to release. 2021 and get ready for 2022. Um, so um, I'm going to share my screen now and walk you through the questions for this process. I will also be posting the questions on my website and we'll put the links in the YouTube description for this video as well. So you can access it anytime. I'm going to post two um, files for these questions. One is going to be the, the file that we're going to look at when I share my screen, which is all the questions for each of the seven steps on, all on one page. And I'll post that. So if you want to just look at it and do your own journaling and on a notepad, I've got my seven step process started already on a yellow legal pad that's right behind my computer. Um, and, you know, and I'll also put um, I will also post a file with one step per page, so you can print it out. You'll print out seven pages and use, you can use that as your journaling place for it. Because you don't want to keep what, you're, what you've journaled for the year because we're letting it go. We're letting go, go of the good things. We're letting go of the difficulties and we don't have to keep it around. So you can just print it out, use that sheet, use those sheets and then let it go um, at the end, um, however you'd like to do that, whatever works best for you. So I'm going to share my screen now so that we can look at these questions. So this is seven steps for moving into the new year. Um, Jane Elizabeth Hart came up with these questions modified from her original seven step process. So step one is gratitude. Thank you, God. What are you thankful for regarding this year? And what did the year give you? How has this year been important in your life? Now we know 2020 has been very challenging for all sorts of reasons. The pandemic started, we've all been in various stages of, of um, lockdown and staying home and sheltering in place, whatever you wanna call it, depends on how you feel about it from one day to the next. One day I feel like I'm locked down and the next day I feel like I'm just sheltering in place. So. Um, so all of those ups and downs from this year, but how has the experiences of the pandemic been beneficial to you? How have you used this time to do good things for yourself, to learn about yourself, to know more about you throughout the year? So everything that ever happens to us, even if we can only see it after the fact, there's, there's always some growth that has happened um, from those situations. So what are you thankful for regarding 2020? What did the year bring for you? How has this year been important to your life? How has this time been important to your life? And the second step is good times. How did this year bring new and joyful experiences to your life? Write down specific times that made you um, feel particularly 
happy and and joyful um, and you know in in normal years maybe you have pictures from the year that you took maybe you have some from this year as well maybe most of them are people with masks on in your pictures um, but you can listen to songs that mean something to you about the year you can look through your Facebook posts or Instagram posts or camera <laughs> pictures from the year to help jog your mind about the good times that you um, have experienced this year. And why is it important when releasing something to look at the good things? Because these first two steps, if we go back up here, these first two steps are all about the good things. Why are we releasing the good things? Don't we want to take those with us into the new year? But when, I mean, sure, we can, we will always have those memories of the good times, but we also want to be open to new good times. We don't want to be holding on to those good times from this year. Like, oh my gosh, I have loved staying at home. So I don't really want to let that go because we don't know what's going to happen in 2021. You know, maybe we'll need to be more engaged in the world, you know, in a certain sense than we were before. And so we want to appreciate the time that we've had staying at home, for example, um, but we don't want to cling to it and pull that with us into the new year because then we're going to butt up against it if that changes, if or when that changes, right? So, so appreciating and acknowledging our good times are important so that we can be open to, to moving with the good times and moving with the changes that 2021 is going to bring because every year brings changes and we want to be as open and clear and um, not anchored to the past as possible when we're moving forward. And if you feel that, you know, on the other hand, 2020, oh my gosh, I can't even think about anything that good that has happened this year. There are these politics and the racial issues and the pandemic and you know people wearing masks, people not wearing masks, all of this has just been a big garbage year. It's important to really look back and find those things that are good. Because if we take, you know, I think every year for the past, I don't know, several, many years, at the end of the year, people say, oh my gosh, I can't wait till the new year. This year has been awful. And I see that over and over again. And I'm so always so appreciative of, of having this process in my life and have used it for so many years that, you know, that I never see the end of the year as, um, you know, oh my gosh, let's get it over with. I always look forward to the new year. There's new energy that comes in in the new year. Um, and it's uplifting and it's inspiring. And, you know, we have all of our New Year's resolutions or commitments to ourselves that are, that are new and exciting. Um, and we also, you know, so we feel that excitement coming into the new year, but, um, but we want to acknowledge the good things about this year. So we're not going into the new year with, you know, kind of a, a chip on our shoulder or, you know, Jane Elizabeth would say, you know, that you're not pulling your sour grapes into the new year. Um, you know, it's like, oh yeah, well, you know, 2021, show me what you got because it better be good because I just had a crappy year and <laughs> I'm ready for a good year now. And we don't want to do that. We want to say, hey, you know what? Every experience has good things and difficult things. And some years are more difficult than others. And some experiences are more difficult than others. But there's always a balance and there's always something we can appreciate and we can grow through when we walk through something even when it's difficult. So it's important to acknowledge and to pull out um, and to be willing to pull out the good things about this year and the positive things that have happened, even if they seem minuscule compared with the difficulties. There's a whole step for difficulties. We have two steps for the good things, one step for the difficulties. So that goes to show you how much um, importance that gratitude an acknowledgement of the good has to be there. Um, so, so again, look through your photos, listen to your music, whatever you need to do to be able to recall those, those good times and those moments of gratitude from, from the year. And then moving forward, step three, 
Um, in this process, it's called Unfulfilled Hopes and Missed Opportunities. Um, you might also know it as the Hopes and Dreams Step. And if you've ever heard me talk about this, you know that I call it the step of expectations, right? So I always put that on the side, you know, it's also the step of expectations. What did I expect from this year? So looking at the questions for this step, what were your hopes and dreams for this year? When you went into 2020, we, none of us had any idea the pandemic was coming. Maybe a, a handful of people knew, you know, or a group of people knew, but the rest of us were kind of just going about our business, right? And so we came into this new year with all sorts of hopes and dreams and ex, you know, expectations for, hey, this is gonna be the, be the year that I fill in the blank. This is going to be the year that I travel around and see my friends and family who live all over. Or this is gonna be the year where I, you know, move or, you know, whatever, whatever your plans were moving into 2020, I imagine at least some of them change. So what were those unfulfilled plans? This is the step to put all those down because maybe they're worth taking into 2021. Maybe those plans are worth renewing in 2021. Or maybe having gone through 2020, you've had the opportunity to reevaluate what you need, what you want, what your direction is. Um, so to be able to release those hopes and dreams opens you up to, okay, what are my possibilities now? I'm a different person now. You're a different person now on you know December 10th when I'm recording this than you were January 1st you know or last December 10th when you were thinking about what you wanted to do for the new year you're a totally different person today than you were then so of course your hopes and dreams for moving forward are going to be different so you want to leave behind the hopes and dreams you don't need anymore the expectations the plans you know, maybe you grieve the plans that didn't come through, or maybe you are still holding on to them and they're still viable for you, then great, put all of them down there, no matter what, put them all down, because this is a step where we lay out all of those expectations and all of those hopes and dreams on the table so that you can, you can feel into what's appropriate for you moving forward. And how did you hope the year would end? You know, is it ending like you thought it would? It didn't, you know, maybe it began like you thought it would, but it certainly didn't end. You know, there's a lot that's happened between January and today. Um, but how are you hoping it would end? We have three weeks until the end of the year. How are you hoping the year would end? What expectations do you still have between now and December 31st at midnight? Um, what remains unfulfilled for you? Just lay it all out on the table. And then the next step is disappointments and difficulties. And this is an overlap of the step of hopes and dreams and expectations because those expectations, those hopes and dreams that we didn't get to fulfill this year are now disappointments and difficulties, right? They're now disappointing. You know, I'm, I'm disappointed I didn't get to travel as much during the year. I, didn't, I'm, I feel disappointed that I didn't get to see my kids as much as I would love to. I feel disappointed that, um, I don't know, I haven't gotten to that step on my process yet. I'm, I'm on the third step today. So um, that's what I'm working on. So what do you feel most disappointed about regarding this year? And sometimes being able to tackle the biggest thing we feel disappointed about helps us kind of churn the process for the other disappointments and difficulties that, that came forth during the year? What's the most difficult thing you had to do during 2020? And I love this next question. What decisions, attitudes, and beliefs do you have about the year? You know, you can, you know, the word curmudgeon is coming to my mind, right? You can be a curmudgeon about 2020 if you want to, but you're taking that curmudgeon attitude and demeanor into 2021. And is that really how you want to start the new year? Probably not. I would assume if you're even paying attention to this video, I assume that that is not how you want to start 2021. So, so, but be honest with yourself. Yeah, I, 
If you feel 2020 really was awful and horrible, let yourself be honest about that so that you can release that. And you know, our next step is forgiveness. So you can forgive the year 2020 and, and whoever involved in 2020 made it so miserable for you, you know, to release that and leave it behind. Do not take that into the new year because it blocks you from those new experiences and new opportunities and new joys and gratitudes and learning experiences for 2021. And we're going to have them anyway. So better to be able to walk through them being clear with clarity and saying, okay, well, maybe I didn't do so hot in 2020 working through my disappointments and difficulties, but I'm leaving them behind now so that I can embrace my lessons that life is always presenting to us. Always, it will. We will never walk into a new year where we don't have challenges and things to work through and we'll have joys. We won't walk into a year where we don't have joys if we're paying attention and if we're open to it. There will always be, always be the ups and downs and it's about being able to flow with it. So we're clearing out everything that's accumulated from 2020 so that we can be in that flow for the new year. So let it out all, you know, again, it's about getting it all out on the table, your decisions, attitudes, and beliefs about 2020 and blah, get, write it out, get it out, shake it off <laughs> and get ready to let it go. And this next question too is really helpful. How are these decisions affecting your life today? This, these decisions, attitudes, and beliefs that you are currently holding about 2020, how are they affecting your life? You know, or maybe it's not about the year per se, but it's about somebody or some situation or a handful of situations or whatever. How is carrying those attitudes, beliefs, decisions about those situations, how are those affecting your life? How will they affect your life if you're carrying them into the next year? And so think about that and be really honest with yourself. Let yourself be very true to yourself in um, um, putting these things out on the table. I say on the table, but they're in your journal, <clears throat> excuse me, or they're on your sheet that you printed out that you're, you're writing about, but let yourself be very honest yeah, this was really hard for me this year and I don't think it's resolved in me. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful holiday gift to give to yourself <clears throat> to recognize, you know, I'm carrying something that, you know, maybe I feel embarrassed about carrying or maybe I feel bad about carrying or maybe I'm clinging to it really tightly and I don't want to let it go. But even being honest with yourself about that is helpful to churn through these I want to say the loose ends of, of the year and to give yourself the gift of processing them through, meaning looking at them, being aware of them and consciously deciding if there's something that you want to carry into the new year or if you really want to let it go and be more open in the new year. All right. <clears throat> and then step five, forgiveness. So the word forgiveness has a terrible reputation um, and all sorts of definitions. So whenever I talk about forgiveness, and some of you may have heard me say this before, whenever I talk about forgiveness, I'm talking about acceptance of what has happened and the willingness to let go of that emotional energy that gets built up around things that have been difficult, that we let go of that emotional energy and we're willing to walk away from it, learning what we've learned, adjusting how we needed to adjust, but we're not going to keep looking back at the situations and, and getting angry about them and working ourselves up about them. And that's really hard. That's hard not to do. I, I fall into that sometimes too, where I'll look back at an experience I had and get all worked up over it and have to step back and go, okay, I'm really carrying this in such a way I do not need to anymore and then have to work on it. And maybe next time I don't have as much energy when it comes up. <clears throat> but forgiveness is about <clears throat> being willing to not carry our 
emotional energy about a situation with us moving forward. So looking over your year 2020, what's the hardest thing you have to forgive about this year? You know, maybe look back at your disappointments and difficulties. If we go back up there, we asked, what do you feel most disappointed about regarding this year? What's the most difficult thing you had to do this year? Maybe some of those are now part of your forgiveness step. What is the hardest thing you have to do to forgive about this year? And forgiveness doesn't mean letting somebody off the hook or putting yourself back into a place where you could be hurt in some way. <clears throat> it's not about not learning from the situation and adjusting yourself, but it's about, again, accepting, okay, that happened. I learned from it. I've adjusted my behavior. And now, so this is, this is a history that I no longer need to carry with me. We'll remember it because our brains are designed to remember things. If they weren't, we would never learn anything. We'd never learn math if we were designed to just forget things and walk away. <laughs> that would be terrible. You know, so we don't forget. It's not forgive and forget is not a thing. But what feels like forgetting is that we let go of the emotional energy around it so it doesn't pop up for us as much. It's still in there. The, the memory of it is still in there, but the emotional energy is what we're releasing from it. The, the crunchy, gnarly, pull you down, ruin your day kind of energy is what we're releasing about it. So what is the hardest thing about this year that, that is up for forgiveness in your world? And how is unforgiveness going to affect your life? That is such a reverse psychology question, isn't it? Because you would think, well, how, how will forgiveness help you? Well, we all know the pretty answers to that, right? But how is unforgiveness going to affect your life? That's a whole different perspective. I love it. It's like getting into my psyche through the back door. It's my favorite question in this whole process. How is unforgiveness going to affect you? You know, so when we think about that, if we're pulling unforgiveness from 2020 into 2021, Ugh, is there not enough to forgive as it is? Do we, do we really need to pull that into the new year? Probably not. But think about it. How is unforgiveness going to affect your life? If we're not forgiving the situation around the pandemic, how is that going to affect us in the new year? Well, we may have a little more time yet where we're waiting for, you know, the vaccine results and distribution and effectiveness and you know all of that you know we've got some time here so if we're pulling that you know gnarly attitude about the pandemic into the new year well you know we might we've got six months right there at least probably that um that will be you know already heavy with emotion going into the new year instead of being able to say hey this it is what it is and we're all adjusting, we're all doing the best we can. There's light at the end of the tunnel, there always is. And, and let's, whew, I'm, I, want to, I want to be open, I want to be um, flexible and malleable for the new year to be able to turn on a dime and do what I need to do to support myself, my family, my coworkers, you know, all the people who I'm responsible and pets I'm responsible for. And, being able to be there presently without carrying all this energy. So, um, and what is causing you not to forgive? Another one of my favorite questions. What is causing you not to forgive? Why, why are you holding on to this? And what are you getting out of it? Because sometimes we, we get things out of holding on to unforgiveness. Well, if I forgive that person or that situation, then it's just going to happen again. They're just going to do it again. Well, maybe because we can't control another human being as much as it would be lovely if we could, but we can't. So, you know, so if this person does whatever it was that they did again, what is it that we can do? What have we learned? What have you learned from that situation so that you're changing? You can't change them, but you can change you. And, you know, sometimes it's like, it's easier. It feels like protection to hold on to unforgiveness, but it isn't, it's, it's a weight. It's a weight and it, it, it clouds us from being able to see, you know, we're, we're so holding anger towards that person or situation that we can't see a solution for ourselves that, hey, I'm, I'm actually free. I am free. I, I don't, this doesn't have to affect me 
not that it's not influencing something in my world, but it doesn't have to affect my day to day. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to take so much energy from my mind and heart and body that, that I'm not being able to make positive, take positive steps for myself and my life and my future and my present. So what is causing you not to forgive? Great questions. And then step six and seven are kind of the completion and, and release steps. Step six is reviewing and releasing. Um, and in this process, Jane Elizabeth encourages us, encourages us to write a letter to God, releasing the year, saying, hey, God, here's my 2020. I give it all to you. Hey, universe, here's 2020. What a roller coaster ride. What a merry-go-round. Oh, my gosh. You know, here's, here's all of this, all of this that I've come up with, all of the things that I'm so grateful for, and all of the things that were so treacherous emotionally and, um, and logistically and whatever, and just say a prayer, releasing all people, places, things, situations from your year, positive and negative. We're letting it all go so that we're, again, so that we're open to that flow of the new year. And if this stuff is too difficult to do sincerely, if you feel like I'm releasing the year, but it's still really bugging me, then more work, and maybe the fourth step is necessary, you know, and don't, don't rush it. You have until December 31st and you have until January 31st if you need it, you know, because whatever release work you do is great. It doesn't have to be, you know, by midnight on December 31st, but I encourage you to do it so that you can feel that fresh boost of the new year energy. Um, but make sure you're, sincerity is there. Make sure your authenticity and your whole heart is part of this process in supporting you because this, this is about supporting you. It's, it supports other people too because they're going to be affected by your state of mind and your peace of mind, but, um, but, it's, but it's for you most of all. So, so make sure you're being perfectly honest with yourself as much as humanly possible um, and you're releasing what needs to be released, forgiving what needs to be forgiven, accepting what needs to be accepted. That doesn't mean permission, right? It's so hard. We use the word forgiveness and it means certain things. We use the word acceptance and it means certain things, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean permission. It doesn't mean approval. It just means, hey, this is out of my control. It is what it is. It was what it was. And I am choosing to move forward from it. So make sure when you get to the sixth step that you are ready to say, hey, it, it has been what it has been and I'm ready to move forward with it. And if you don't feel that from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, then find out, just check inside and say, okay, what am I holding on to? Am I holding on to something I missed? Oh, let me go back to step three then and see what expectation was that or what hope and dream was that that I'm still holding on to and still feeling like, oh, I wish that would have happened or I wish that wouldn't have happened. Write, write about it. Let yourself write about it. Give it a voice and let it go. And that step six is a really wonderful place to check in about that. It's like, oh, am I holding on to anything? If so, keep writing. If not, you can move on to step seven, completion, surrendering the year to God, open yourself to new possibilities in the coming year, let it go, take your, your journaling process and shred it, have a little ceremony, light a candle, shred it, hear that crunchy, wonderful sound of the year being released and dissolved and, and, um, and let go of you can burn it in your fireplace. If you have a fireplace or a grill outside or you know, a bucket that is metal, <laughs> don't use a plastic bucket, but you can, you can crumple up the paper and, and burn it somewhere safe and just watch that transmuting of that energy in the fire and releasing and, and have a have a ceremony around it. We have so many different kinds of ceremonies and different kinds of 
of religious practices and, and things this time of year. So make your own, make your own. This is, um, this is a very much um, a, a when I, what I want to say integrated part of my year every year and I it's important to me and I have my process around it and um, you know Jane Elizabeth has a whole series of videos that I will um, send out and, and post in the YouTube description as well um, you know, that, that you can go to for support because I'm doing this just real quick in one video, but she's got a video for each step and several of them because she's done it so many times over the years and you can go and check in with that and get some more backup on this process and inspiration and motivation. You know, her videos are beautiful for that. Um, and then there's a meditation at the end that she leads us through that I will also include I may wait until next time because what I would like to do is have a live meditation um, at the end of the year and I will post the date and information for that when I send this video out um, that we can all join in together to release the year. So you have to do your journaling work first and then, um, then when we get to, I'm thinking like the last Sunday evening of the month, which I don't know the date off the top of my head, but we'll do our 5 p.m. Central Time um, gathering and have a meditation to release the year. And then you have a few extra days of the year to finish it up, maybe listen to the meditation again on December 31st um, and um, have that ceremony as part of your end of the year goings on. Um, so, I will include all of this information, but the most important thing is that you are doing your processing work because a video can't do that for you. I can't do that for you. I can only do it for myself and, and share in that process with you. Um, so get to work, do a, do a couple of steps every week. Um, and by the end of the three weeks, you'll be ready for the new year. Um, and you'll have a different experience of the new year transition. You'll have a different experience of 2021. Um, it might be hard to see now, but um, I know throughout the years I've been able to see and been so grateful to be able to let go of what I needed to let go of, whatever unfinished business, whatever disappointments and difficulties, just be able to shake that off and, and be ready for the new year has been fabulous and wonderful. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. There we go. So yes, do your journaling work. And I look forward to um, hearing from you if you have any questions or if there's any experiences about this that you'd like to share. I would love to hear them. Um, and I will look forward to seeing you at the meditation, at the seven steps meditation on the last Sunday of December. Um, and I will re be recording that meditation and we'll post that as well if you're not able to make it. But if you are, just join us. There's something about meditating together that really adds to the, the push of the release of, um, of the year. So that support of being there is supporting everybody. So I hope to see you there. And I look forward to um, hearing whatever you want to share about it and um, have a wonderful time journaling have a wonderful holiday season happy hanukkah that starts today merry christmas and everything in between so take care and i will look forward to seeing you soon bye-bye